and you are sure the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want any good thing. Shout, 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 hallelujah. The God of heaven that brought you here today will establish your going. In the name of Jesus Christ. He has not left us without a witness in this place. He's been good to us. Testimonies of his goodness keep rolling. And we cannot but say, Father, thank you. For all the testimonies we have had today and many more, Miracle, alerts, open doors, deliverances, somebody you know, just walking into a conversation and then a book that blessing generation has come out of it. For all these and many more, including your own testimony you have not shared. <laughs> Let's give him thanks. Let's exalt him. Let's enthrone him. Let's worship him. Thank him for his word of our praise. Father, we thank you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we enthrone you. Lord, we worship you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your good hand upon us. So you be all the glory in Jesus' excellent name. Please put your wonderful hands together for Jesus. And you may please be seated. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Now, this is a special communion Sunday. It's also an encounter with destiny service. The word of the Lord to us this month being, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Can you say that with me? You will not want any good thing in Jesus' name. Now, right from last week, we began a series of teaching that will run in all our Sunday services, understanding how God leads. Please, I encourage you to get the teaching of last Sunday and the first service today. Very, very crucial. We're going to be building up on that. So we're looking at part 2B of that, understanding how God leads in this second service. We're looking at that part 2B. Remember, this is encounter with destiny. You have come to the God of heaven. We will give you an encounter with destiny. Encounter is something you don't easily forget. You can't forget an encounter. It's not possible. Encounter is a privilege, opportunity to meet with God that produces undeniable testimony, change of story in one's life. For instance, Jacob met with God face to face. His life was preserved. Genesis 32. He got a change of name for it. God will give you an encounter of a lifetime today. Come with me to Proverbs 19 verse 21. Proverbs 19 verse 21. I take my test from there. Proverbs 19 verse 21. 21. Okay? The Bible says there are many devices... In a man's heart, nevertheless, which means notwithstanding, come what may, however, verily, verily, certainly, most assuredly, nonetheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. I pray for you. Only God's counsel for you will stand. Man's counsel for you will not stand. The devil's counsel for you will not stand. Amen. The counsel and plan of the wicked for you will not see the light of the day. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. That God's counsel for man, God's original intent for man, God's predetermined purpose for man is what is called destiny. Everyone God created has a destiny. God didn't bring you here for nothing. There's a reason. There's a purpose. But you see, in the journey of destiny, you need encounters that can shape that destiny 
And today, you're going to have one of such encounters. And I discovered that one of the things you need or the encounters we need in destiny to make it fruitful, to make it glorious, to make it progressive is that of direction. Yes, your destiny is God's whole cancer, people, plan for you of a nation of a people. It is unveiled through visions. God showing you that plan. Now, but you cannot fulfill it alone with the vision. You may know that I'm going from here to Lagos. That's God wants me to be in Lagos. But you must know where to turn. Amen. If you don't know where to turn, you can go the wrong way. That's where direction is very, very important. So what we're talking about, how God leads, is simply showing us the steps to take to get to a colorful destiny. No one can fulfill destiny leading himself. The wealth of a man is not himself. It's not man that walketh himself to direct his own step. Jeremiah 10, 23. That's why Jeremiah cried, Lord, Lord, direct me, not according to your judgment. Direct me. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is a way of destruction. It's a way of death. So you need to know the ways of God. His ways are the highways of life. And God makes his ways known to us most times through giving us direction, leading us, guiding us. As a matter of fact, our protection is in his guidance. <laughs> Because as it's guiding you, it's automatically guarding you. As it's guiding you, it's protecting you. None of us will be outside his plan in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Remember your plan. The plan of God for your life is what determines the direction of your life. And if you are not following that plan, a miss road. Please, I want you to get the teaching of the first service. Very, very crucial. You may not be able to repeat all we said, but we want to build up on that. Now, I want to start by asking a question. Why do we even need this leading of God? Why do we need direction? Because if you don't know the value of a thing, you will not appreciate it. Number one, we are sent as sheep among wolves. Matthew 10, 16. He said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as those. If I'm sent as a sheep among wolves, and wolves eat sheep naturally. Naturally. That's their food. Their Namdak approved food. If I must not be eating on the road, then there must be a way out. And that's why direction very, is very, very crucial. It's leading. If God is the one leading you, you will not allow the wolves of life to eat you up. You will not allow the wolves of life to eat up your business. You will not allow... The serpents and scorpions of life to bite you. So from today, as you follow his leading, I see you escape every scourge of the woes of life. In Jesus' mighty name. Number two, why do we need his leading? It is through the leading of God that we escape lack and want. If God is not leading you, sir, lack and want will be evident. But if God is the one leading you, you will not lack, you will not want. Psalm 23 verse 1, where also the choir you know, sang for us this morning, powerful administration, God bless you, choir. Now, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He led me beside the sea waters. He restored my soul. He led me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Which means if I'm lacking or if there are lags and wants, that means I'm not following his leading. Because naturally, sir, there is no day the sheep will so grow that they will not need the shepherd. Except the ones who go hungry. Are you getting me now? The day the sheep says, I've grown, I don't need the shepherd, that's the day his hunger starts. So, the sheep does not worry for food. It's the shepherd that goes to look for green pasture and says, sheep, come and eat. So, if not much as you are sheep, following the, you will not lie. Oh, God, I learned a very big lesson. 2009, I will never forget this. One of the mentorship sections I had with God's servant, Bishop Abiyo, I have to travel, it was 30th December exactly. I have to see him in his house. And he, he taught me some things. One of those things he taught me, I took him back, I told my wife, I said, look, if I'm to study for 20 years, I won't get this secret. He showed me how a lion is, 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 is not as strong as the sheep spiritually. Physically speaking, a lion Looks stronger than a sheep, Abby. But spiritually, a sheep is stronger than a lion. He taught me that secret and he has worked for me. You see the lion? The only thing that kills lion is hunger. Find out. When lion hunts for food, he can't see. He can die. But no sheep hunts for food. Psalm 34 verse 10. They that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. But the lions may suffer hunger and want. But they that seek the Lord shall not do what? Want any good thing. Any what? <laughs> if you are following his leading, sir, you will never lack. You will never lack. If you are lacking, you are not following his leading. Q-E-D. Quod eram demonstrandum. If it's mathematics. <laughs> Hallelujah. So be the sheep of his pasture. The shepherd will look for food. The sheep will come and eat and clean his mouth and wait for another turn without struggling. So why do you want to struggle? The lion is struggling here and there looking for food. But food is being served the sheep as he looks like Mumu. But he's not lacking food. Which one is better? Eh? Which one is better? So go and be lion. <laughs> Of course, you need the two. You need the two nature because I've, I've grown that revelation beyond that because I discovered you see, you need your lion nature. But where do you use your lion nature? When you are dealing with the devil, bring your lion nature. When you are dealing with God, bring your sheep nature. Many bring their lion nature. Let's, let's bombard heaven. You are wasting your time. They will finish you. <laughs> Be the sheep of his pasture. But if you are dealing with the devil, come as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's where your ne lion nature is needed. But if it's for provision, you need to be a sheep following him and he will guide you into green pasture. Green pasture. Green pasture. He knows where, the, he knows where you can buy the best. He knows where you can sell the best. He knows who, who to contact. He knows who to lead you to for that your destiny to open up. Do you know there's just one contact you make now and your story, the story of your generation will change. All this you are crying, God, see how this town is. You'll be in this town. There are people in this town making hundreds of millions in this town, not somewhere in this town. All you need is just for God to lead you and guide you. Say with me, I hear. So how does God lead us? We need to know. How does he lead us? Number one is through the voice behind the word. The voice behind the word of God. There is a voice behind the word of God. Psalm 29, 3 to 4. He said, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. I know the water is also a representative of the world. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. There is a voice behind the word. It's called Rema. 
There is the logos of the world. The written word is the logos. There is the, the rhema. That as I'm speaking to you right now, you are not hearing the same thing. All of us are not hearing the same thing. Are you getting me now? But God is speaking to you specifically concerning certain issues that concerns you. And you understand it that way. Another person may not understand it. By the time you come back with your testimony, this is what Pastor said on Sunday. Somebody will be wondering, ah, uh-uh, but I was in that service now. <laughs> so everybody is hearing at different levels. So the rhema behind the word is another thing God uses to direct us. Psalm 119 verse 105. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my faith and a light unto my part. Please, it is the spirit of God that gathered the word, there is a void behind it. One day, I was reading my Bible. I came to Jeremiah 35 verse 19, and God spoke to me. I had the rhema. I had the rhema. What is written there? From there, God spoke to me. It's not exactly as it's written, but he spoke to me. And he said to me that I will not lack a man to stand before him for the days of my life. And now look at the situation. Before this time, we had our first two children. They were years. And for seven years, nothing. Seven good years. And I had this word. I ran like a madman. I went to my wife. I said, I found it. <laughs> Ureka. I have found it. I have found it. It is done. The short of the story is that I don't know how my wife, I can't explain to you how she conceived. I can't tell, not explain it. But every scan showed it was a baby girl. Every test showed it was a baby girl. Even the pre-delivery scan, I was there. But when they delivered the boy, it was a baby boy. According to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord. And that, see, even as I'm sharing this testimony, people are getting testimony by it. I've shared it many places. People have gotten, somebody at 23 years, no menstruation, has gotten twins by this testimony. 23 years. To show that this is of God. He's still working. Glory to God. Now hear me. You need the rema. You need what? The rema. The voice behind the word, the written word. Number two. It's through the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, 19 to 20. Acts 10, 19 to 20. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him. Look at the Spirit there. It's capital S. That's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. <laughs> if the Spirit didn't speak like that, Peter won't go anywhere. You know, he was already saying, I, I cannot touch an unclean thing. Even when God said, Peter, I can't like eat. He said, I will not touch any unclean thing. God said, three people are waiting for you. I'm the one that sent them. Philip was on his own. The Holy Spirit said, go and join yourself to the chariot of the Ethiopian Enoch. And their discussion led to the conversion of that Ethiopian Enoch. In Acts chapter 8. The Holy Spirit of God is the spirit of truth. Tell me the spirit of truth. Yes, John 16, 13, 14 tells us that. He's the spirit of truth. And he said, when he comes, he will guide us into all truth. So if you have the Holy Spirit inside you, he can guide you into both secular, spiritual truth. Now hear me, sometimes some people come to you, they're lying. Eh? They're lying. You know that the spirit, this person is lying. You know, you just forgot of respect. You just don't want to embarrass the person. Have you experienced that before? Even some people come to do you 419, you know this one, 419. They even call you, even the tone, you know that this one is 419. There are some people like that, they call me. They, before, they, before even they call, just one day say, before the person call, they say, this next call is 419. <laughs> I say, call, I start talking, uh, do you know, do you know somebody, do you know, don't you know anybody in London? I say, yes, it's Bishop, so, so, so. He say, yeah, yeah, I say, God. <laughs> He can speak to you. The Spirit of God can speak to you. He can speak to you. He can show you things to come. He can show you things to come. Things that will happen tomorrow, he can show you. He can show you about that relationship you are in. He can show you the end from the beginning. 
So you need him. So there is the voice of the spirit. It's another way God leads us. Number three is through the witness of the spirit. Through the witness of the spirit. Through what? The witness of the spirit. Now pay attention to this one because this is the commonest way God leads believers today. This is the commonest way. There is nobody here except you are not born again. If you are born again, God must have led you through this way. Maybe you didn't take notice. But there is nobody here that God does not speak to every day. Because this has to do with your daily decisions. Daily steps. This inner witness. The spirit, the voice of the spirit may not speak to you sometimes until maybe there is a danger. Or there is a serious problem coming. Are you getting me now? But the witness, he witnesses to you on every step you want to take. It's just that we are not paying attention. We are not paying attention. As I'm preaching to you now, even sometimes some things are going on in your heart, I will tell you. Have I not been telling you something like that before? <laughs> the, the, it comes by that perception, that, 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 that witness of the Holy Ghost. Are you getting me now? Uh, so you can see what is going on even in the people's hearts by it. By this Holy Ghost witnessing to you. Romans 8.16 the spirit bear a witness, the spirit is a bear a witness with our spirit that we are the sons or the children of God. Now, how do you know you are a child of God? It is by the witness of this spirit. By the witness of this spirit. How do you know God is on your side? It's by the witness of this spirit. Sometimes, too, so you witness to you that you know you have done something, you know that God is far from you. You discover you can't, <laughs> you can't know witness. <laughs> I can go on and on illustrating this to us. Now, you see that it's raining now. Hmm? Assuming before you left your house, maybe you wash your clothes early in the morning. You wash clothes and you put it out there for it to dry. And as you are stepping out, Something tells you, go and pack these clothes. Are you getting me now? Pack those clothes. You say, no, look at the weather is bright now. There's nothing, no need. I'm in a hurry. And you left it. And maybe before you came back, you say that there are rain. And they say it's rain, maybe come to the ground and spoil it. And you have to rewash it again. And as you are doing it, you'll be telling yourself, hey. and something told me, oh, something told me to carry this clothes. Oh. Has it ever happened to you before? If you have a regenerated spirit, that's how the Holy Ghost witnesses things to you. Sometimes you are going to your office and you say, no, don't follow this road. Just follow here. Are you getting me now? You'll be arguing. Why, 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 why? You say, and you now enter. You discover the road is blocked. Maybe trailer has fallen and blocked the road. And you like, hey, and I, I, if I have, no, no, I should have. Have you ever experienced it? Mm -hmm. So pay attention next time. Is it okay? Pay attention. attention. Pay attention. You want to make some investment. You witness to you. This thing you are putting money. This money is going to go. You say, Kai, how? Look at the profit margin. Hi. After just one night. Eh? <laughs> hey. And he's telling you, Holy Spirit, be telling you, be careful. This thing you want to do. This money is going. It's when the thing clear. After two weeks, you do like this. What happened to me? <laughs> Please be more sensitive. Help me tell you nobody be more sensitive. And anyway, as we go in the course of the, I will show you why, how you, you know or you decipher the, the leading of God. Is it okay? So that you'll be more sensitive. Number four is heavenly vision. Heavenly vision. Say with me, heavenly vision. Oh, hell. This heavenly vision is not just dream, oh, because some people now say, God used to talk to me through, through vision. Eh? He used to show me dream. What will happen? Ask them what happened. It's accident. Somebody die. <laughs> evil, evil thing. Why can't you see better thing? <laughs> Why can't you see yourself building hospitals and then be giving, building schools and then giving scholarship to people? It's only accident you see. Dead, dead people. Eh? Eh? No. That's not the kind of vision we're talking about. This is heavenly vision. This is God showing you things. God can show you things through pictures. Are you getting me now? Things that will happen. 
That's what happened to Peter, in a, sorry, Paul, in Acts chapter 9, 6 to 9. You remember, on his way to Damascus, he encountered Jesus. There was a flash of light, and he went blind, and then he started asking Jesus, what do you want me to do? And he was led to Damascus. Later on, he was telling Agrippa, I was not disobedient to that heavenly vision. In Acts 26, verse 19. So God can show you visions of life, of heaven, of things. I understood the power in the name of Jesus through vision like this. The name of Jesus, the power behind it. Yes, through a vision. Number five, through God sent prophets. Amos 3 7. God will never do anything until he first of all reveals it to his prophets. That's one of God's way of doing things. God will reveal his secret first to his prophets, the servant, the prophet, so they cannot reveal it to you. But please understand something. I want to make a balance here. Even if God is revealing anything through any prophet to you, you must have witnessed it to you first. Are you getting me now? Uh -huh. Because you have the spirit of God inside you. You must have witnessed it to you. But God can reveal things through his prophets to us. In Luke chapter 4, 25 to 27, we are told there, was, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Serepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And God did that to preserve the woman and to preserve Elijah. Elijah. It, was, it looked controversial. An unmarried prophet to a widow. But it was God that sent. And if the woman didn't do what Elijah asked her to do, by that encounter, she and her child could have, you know, she was preparing me to eat so that she and her Child, you can eat and die. But Elijah said, it's, make them for me first. And gave to him. And then, for three and a half years, there was abundance. Also, in verse 27, many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, that's Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was clean, saving Naaman, the Syrian. It was, in, it was Elijah, Elijah that gave Naaman the secret to recovery of a leprosy. He said, go to Jordan and dip yourself seven times. As a matter of fact, he argued with it first. I did not swimming pool in my house. <laughs> Better rivers, like I have in my place. Why must I go to dirty Jordan? But if you, do, if you want to be cleansed, go there. And when he went there seven times and dipped himself, he got recovered. The same way, there are certain instructions that come to you that God sent through his anointed servants to you. Please, Pay attention, because in doing that may be your breakthrough that you desire. Hallelujah. So how do I assess divine guidance? Quickly, how do I assess divine guidance? Is he everybody that can be led? No, it's not everybody that can be led. It's not even every believer that can be led. There are some believers that are operating like goats instead of sheep. So you must know how to position yourself. The moon has no light of its own. But by positioning at a particular angle to the sun, reflects light to the world, and we are celebrating moonlight. Now, hear this. There's a way to position yourself for you to be able to hear God or receive from God or be led by God. And number one is by being spiritually minded. Help me tell you, number be spiritually minded. Yes. Be spiritually minded. Many people are carnally minded. The things of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, cares of this world is robbing them. Their mind is centered on carnal things so they can't hear God. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. You can't hear God if you are not in the spirit. Revelation 1.10, I was in the spirit in the last day and I had a voice. If you are not sensitive, you can't pick divine signals. Is somebody following me now? Now, okay. 
Some of us are acquainted with the media. Now, as I'm talking to you right now, AIT, NTA, and some other television stations that are broadcasting, are you receiving them? Are you hearing from them? Eh? Why? You don't have access to television, and you, don't, you are not tuned to their channel. Is it okay? Even if you have television, and you don't tune to the channel, you can't get it. The same way, if you don't tune to the channel of heaven, you can't pick anything from heaven. The channel of heaven is what spiritual, to be spiritual. Be spiritual. Be spiritually minded. That's when you pick something from God. And there are many ways, you, many things that can help enhance your spirituality. Your word study, your fasting and prayer. Have you discovered that most times when you are fasting and praying, you hear better? Eh? As a matter of prayer, we make you to tune. Fasting will make you to fine tune. <laughs> Have you seen those, all those, uh, some of you are town people, you may not understand all these things. But in those days in the village, eh, if you want to, they used to use bamboo to, you do have that experience? Uh, they used bamboo to do pool for television. Those are kind of black and white television that time. <laughs> then, when the thing is doing bra 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 bra, you want to get it, you know, you'll be turning the bamboo. Turning it, turning it, turning it. <laughs> Did you get it? What are you doing? You are fine tuning. So when you are praying, that's, you are tuning. When you fast, you fine tune so that you can get clarity. Say, may I hear? Please be spiritual. 1 Corinthians 2 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Things of God are spiritually discerned. To a foolish person, you are telling him, he say, are you a Jew man? What are you talking about? He doesn't understand that. Canna people can get direction. If you want to get direction, be spiritual. Help me tell you, number be spiritual. Yes. Number two, have a genuine crave to be led. In other words, Determine hunger, thirst to be led by God. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Let your heart be open to his leading. Let your heart be hungry for his leading, for his guidance. God didn't say you should not get your own understanding. But he said don't lean in your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lay not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct and he shall direct thy path. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. You can have your understanding. You can devise your ways. There are many devices in the heart of a man. But well, please check it out with God. Come back to him. Be ready. Be craving. Crave for him to direct you. Lord, what is it? You can have your options. But Lord, what is the way out? What do you want me to do? In this particular issue, how do you want me to handle it? And he will direct your path. He will direct your path. Remember, he said, call upon me and I will hear you. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you know nothing about. You are the one to call. So you are the one to initiate it. And he is ready. To guide you. Now, I want you to know this. The truth is this, is that God is more eager to direct you than you are even eager to get his direction. Because the sheep, every shepherd owns his voice to his sheep. Every shepherd owns his voice to the sheep. So God owns his voice to all. But are you ready to follow? Number three, open up the revelation of the word of God. Open up to the revelation of the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my faith and a light unto my path. Open up to his revelation. Anytime the revelation of God's word comes to you, it, is, it comes with direction. Call upon me and I will answer you his intervention. I will show you great and mighty things you know nothing about. His revelation. Anytime the revelation of God's word comes, it comes with direction. It comes with showing you the revelation has to do with two things. The things that he's showing you 
with your eyes. That's why you need a thin eye. And then the things you are hearing, the instructions you are hearing with your ears. That's why you also need a hearing ear. Proverbs 20, verse 12. He said, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made both of them. May you receive hearing and hearing ear and seeing eyes in the name of Jesus. When God is showing you something, may you see it. When he's speaking to you, may you hear it. In the name of Jesus Christ. No one here will walk in confusion. No one here will walk in misdirection in the name of Jesus. Every wrong step you are taking right now, the grace to make a U-turn, receive it in the name of Jesus. So what are the biblical proofs of being led by God? What are the biblical proofs? How do I prove that I'm being led by the Spirit of God? I call it the characteristics of divine leading. How do I prove that this leading I'm following is of God? This is important. Number one is that you have joy. You have what? Say with me joy. Yes, supernatural joy. If God is the one leading you, that leading will produce joy, not sorrow. So anything you claim that this is God leading you and is bringing sorrow, bringing sorrow, bringing sorrow, check it out. It may not be from God. Did you hear that? That's as it is. Because there are voices. There are directions. The devil will want to direct, misdirect you so that he can destroy you. There are voices out there. But if it is God leading you, sir, it will bring joy. Psalm 89 verse 15. Psalm 89 verse 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. When God is leading you, he will lead you in the path of joy. Jesus, regardless of the odds, this despising of many, the mockery of many, they spit on him. They laughed at him. But the Bible said, Jesus did not allow that to wear him down. Why? Because of the joy that was set before him. He knows the way he is going that it will end in joy. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 2. We are foreseen, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every word and sin the which doth easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down in the right hand of the throne of God. Is it that when God is leading you, there may not be challenges? There may be challenges, but you will see that joy will still keep the inside speaking. It will help you to go through it and get to where you are going. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Joy. Joy is a pointer that you are in the right direction. When you lose that joy, check it. Number two, Is peace and serenity. Pressure-free state of life. Anytime God leads you, he will lead you to still waters. Peace. Some of you are town people. If you go to the village to fetch water from the stream, that especially early in the morning when the thing is still, you know, very clean and quiet and everywhere is just lively. Now, if God is the one leading you, you'll be announcing it with peace, serenity, pressure-free existence. If you're experiencing pressure, anything you're doing, you're experiencing too more pressure, check it, God may not be there. Are you getting me now? Now, if you say it's not true, have you, have you done some things, maybe project or anything before? A time came you were struggling to do it. Bah, 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 running, bah, 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 bah. But a time comes when with God's time and it just feels you. Before you know, the way it will happen, say, you've been wondering, ah, ah, what happened? So it's easy like this. Have you ever experienced something like that? When God is leading you, sir, peace, no pressure. It is the devil that puts pressure so that you can commit. 
Say, do it, 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 do it now or else. Ah, you are losing. Bah, 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 bah. But God will take you in the path of peace. Remember, his paths are paths of peace. Proverbs 3, 17. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. And her paths are paths of peace. 1 John 5, 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandment. And his commandments are not grievous. God cannot command you to do what is grievous. His commandments are not grievous. So I command the peace of God that partial understanding to answer to you in the name of Jesus. Anyway, this is our encounter with destiny service. Please note that if you are a born again child of God, behind your redemption is the mystery of predestination. Even before redemption is the mystery of what? Predestination. God has known you even from the foundation of the earth. You are not an accident. You are not accidental discharge. Your parents may have said that we didn't want you. You are not wanted child, but it's not true. If God allowed you to come here by mystery of predestination, he already knew that you are coming. And he allowed you to come for a reason. Ephesians 1, 3 to 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Say with me, I'm already blessed. According to as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. You have been chosen even before the world started, God has chosen you. Please. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his way, to the praise and to the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in his beloved. Say with me, I'm accepted. I'm not rejected. Hallelujah. You are chosen. You are peculiar pre people. You are unique. And God has adopted you. Among his children. But before he did that, he predestinated you. Now, no one can come to God except he draws him. So if God has drawn you to himself, it's because he has known you from the foundation of the earth and he has predestinated you. Hallelujah. That's why in Acts chapter 13 verse 46, when the Gentiles heard it, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. The Gentiles to the Jews looked like as if they shouldn't have salvation. But God has already predestined that. And they receive salvation one day. God brought you in because you're already predestinated. Now, look at this. Everyone ordained unto salvation is also ordained unto glorification. If you're ordained unto salvation, if God ever saved you, sir, his aim of saving you is to glorify you. That's why we understand through scripture that every child of God has a glorious destiny. For those he foreknew, the call. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. Romans 8, 29 and 30. God has called you into glory. Shame will be far from you. Yeah. Every area of life where your destiny is experiencing shame, I command so to be divorced from you. Yeah. From now, I command everything about your destiny to begin to speak glory. Yeah. To begin to speak honor. To begin to speak favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are born again child of God also, please know that your destiny is progressive. Say with me, my destiny is progressive. So it's not today down, tomorrow up. No, it's progressive. Proverbs 4, 18. The path of the just like a shining light that shines what? Brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And brighter. Until the perfect day. That's the day of coming of Christ. So, no more one step forward, two step backward. In every area of your life. From now, I command you to begin to make progress. In your business, make progress. In your career, make progress. In your family, make progress. In your finances, make progress. Concerning your children, progress. No one here will be better than his children. Your children will be better than you. Your grandchildren will be better than your children. In the name of Jesus. Uh, not that the father just bought land. 
the, the, the child came and mowed their block. And then the grandchild came and started it. No. There will be progress in every area of your life. In Jesus' glorious name. In Jesus' mighty name. Moreover, if you are born again child of God, I want to congratulate you. Because you have an enviable destiny. Say with me, enviable destiny. So from now, they will envy you. Eh? Help me tell you, neighbor, they will envy you. Uh -huh. So don't be afraid when they are envying you. Don't come to pass or pray hot prayer. They are envying me. It's part of the blessing. Are you getting me now? I've told us here before, if you are not envied, you are not blessed. If people are not talking about you at the back, you are not blessed. You are not blessed. You're just wasting time. <laughs> when you are making progress, when you are being blessed, when you are being favored, they will gather at the back to be talking. That's why they call them backbiters. Backward? They don't bite front, they, back, they bite back. And if you don't want them to bite your back, you go to the back. Do you want to go to the back? So keep being in front. Let them be biting in the back. That's their ministry. Help them to be fulfilling their ministry. Yeah, are you getting me now? Uh -huh. Let them be. That's their ministry. Let them be fulfilling it. Why you are fulfilling your own by making progress and progress and... <laughs> so, don't mind them. That's their, their own work. Maybe that's what they're predestined to do. <laughs> For your own, you have an enviable destiny. As Isaac was, Galatians 4, 28, so are we the children of promise. And what was, Isaac was envied. A whole nation, a whole nation, not individuals. Individuals are envying you now. They are crying. When nation will be envying you, what will you do? Eh? A whole nation came and said, look, you are stronger than us. The, a, a nation envy the man. And the Bible says that's how you are. So when individuals are envying you, so don't, they shouldn't disturb you. Because where you are going is where nations will be envying you. The whole Nigeria will now come and say, we are envying this man. Why is he doing like this? Not only him, God, they bless. Hallelujah. One day, a woman, I was giving a car. A pastor's wife came to me and said, I will pray fire will consume me. I said, Mommy, what did I do? Say, no, only you, God, they bless. That's the offense. <laughs> God will shield you from the envy of men. Yeah. You didn't understand that prayer. God will shield you from the envy of men. Yeah. Uh -huh. Their envy will not be able to bring you down. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. So how do I fulfill my glorious destiny? How do I realize it? And how do I fulfill it? Number one, have a genuine heart for God. Please note that your heart for God determines a lot of things in this kingdom. Have a genuine heart for God and for the interests of his kingdom. You must have it. Have a heart for God. Don't have a heart for things. Now let me show you a secret on how to get things. I don't know why this one is coming. You see, anything you want to get, lose interest on it. Do you understand? If you don't have interest on clothes like this, you see clothes will be pursuing you. You don't have interest in cars, cars will be coming. You don't have interest in money, money will be pursuing you. Are you getting me now? Many of the things you are pursuing, you may not get it. But the ones you are not pursuing, you, did you see they are pursuing you? Have you noticed that? Anything you don't, anything you want, you really want to get, lose interest on it. It will come to you naturally. But let your heart be after God. Run after God and the interest of his kingdom. They seek you for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. One of the greatest commandments we are told is to love the Lord with your heart, with your mind, with your strength, with all you have. Matthew 22, 36 to 40. Now, when you love God, the things that eyes have not seen, anything, if, you, if you are a lover of God, anything you have seen is a child's play compared to what you are going to see. Because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. So what if you're a lover of God, what God has prepared is greater than what you are seeing now. So you don't kill yourself. What people are saying or what they're not saying or what is not happening. Say me, I'm a lover of God. My heart is for God and for the interest of his kingdom. Then you have your glorious destiny fulfilled. Honestly, everyone pursuing after God. Now look at somebody like Nehemiah now. Look at Nehemiah, a cop bearer. He ended up a governor. In his village, if they are to elect, nobody will give his word that governorship ticket. Not talk of. But by following, running after God, 
he became a governor. He became a governor. Please have a heart for God. What are your dreams for God? What are your dreams for the kingdom of God? Remember, the plan, your, the plan of your life is inside his own plan. So when you pursue after God and the things of God, you discover that God is now making you. The more he's making you, the more your destiny is being established in him. Hallelujah. May God give us understanding. Number two, remain open to the word of direction. Remain open for the word for direction. Acts 20.32 Now brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Acts 1, uh, 2 Peter 1, three. According to his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So there are things that pertain to life, there are things that pertain to godliness. God has given us all. And those things are valuable as you get access to his word. He gives you an inheritance among the sanctified, the word of God. So the word of direction is very, very vital because it gives you access to the things that God has prepared for his sense. Number three, be committed to a life of prayer and praise. Be committed to a life of prayer and praise. Now, I'll show us from the two angles. Those two forces make for direction. Prayer will give you direction. They call upon me and I will answer you. That's the intervention. And I will show you great and mighty things you know nothing about. If you want direction, you ask for it. Ask, I will show you. So, you see, if you are giving to a life of prayer, prayer is an investment that waits for you in your future. So any prayer you are praying now does not live, is waiting for you, direct, doing something for your future. So, you see that God will begin to direct you. He begin to direct you. He show you great and mighty things you know nothing about. Hallelujah. Number two, in the aspect of praise now, Isaiah 30, 29 to 30, you shall have a song as in, in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart and when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. Verse 30. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. He shall show the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of devouring fire with scattering and tempest and hailstones. Now anytime you are in the attitude of praise and worship, God can speak to you. It's, it's a fertile environment. It's an environment that makes God to speak because God actually inhabits the praises of his people. So he's very close. He can speak to you. He can speak to you. Sometimes I don't know what to pray. I don't know what to say. But if I can get into the atmosphere of worship and praise, he can speak to you. He can speak to you. He can give you definite direction. Sometimes it may be a scripture he drops or some scriptures. I call it a skeleton. And before you know it, you're getting direction, knowing what else to do. So please, Engage yourself in the two. Be committed to a life of prayer. Don't be a prayerless believer. If you're a prayerless believer, you lack direction. In all your ways, acknowledge him. So pray. Acknowledge him and pray. And he will guide you. He will direct your path. And also, give yourself to a life of praise and worship. And what a wonderful thing this evening. We are coming back here to praise God down. You will hear him in Jesus' mighty name. Now hear me. Everything that has not allowed you to walk in clear direction. I clear it off your life. Yeah. From now, you will hear God clearly. Yeah. The grace to follow through, receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And there are many here, God has already shown you what to do. He has told you what to do. As I'm talking now, he's reminding you, grace to go and do that, which he has told you, receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And your life will never remain the same. Your destiny shall be established. Your destiny will not be corrupted. Your destiny cannot be exchanged in the name of Jesus Christ. And every plague upon any one destiny here, I command you to be lifted. From now, make progress. From now, be envied. From now, stand out in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise on your faith. We are going to pray in a short while. But before we do that, I want to give opportunity to some people here that need to be born again. Jesus said, I know my sheep, and my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. The shepherd owns the sheep his voice, but the sheep's job is to follow the shepherd, and he will never lack or will never be a victim. 
Now you are not entitled to his voice until you become a sheep of his pasture. And it's an intentional thing. It's something you consciously do. Somebody is here today You want to say, Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. Save me. I don't want to be a goat. I want to be a sheep of your pasture. Save me. Please put your hand on your chest if that's your prayer or your desire or your crave right now. Somebody is here. You gave your life to Jesus someday. Yes, you did. But now you can't feel God. No joy, no peace. You can also return to him. He will return to you. Put your hand on your chest. Also pray this prayer of dedication. Somebody is struggling with certain evil habits. Maybe that's what I've not allowed him to direct you clearly. Maybe that's what has been holding you down from establishing your destiny. Why not turn to him today and let him deliver you? New Year's resolution didn't help you. Jesus can help you. Turn to him today. If you're among the category of people I mentioned, sincerely put your hand on your chest. Remember, a sincere and a contrite heart, God will not despise. Pray this prayer sincerely from your heart this morning. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart you are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. I am born again. I am a child of God. Father, I return to you. Return to me in Jesus' mighty name. Please, you pray that prayer with, with your heart. Lift your hand up right now, wherever you are. Wave that hand to Jesus as a sign of surrender. Please wave your hand to Jesus.